Hey everybody, Peacock here in Singapore and I'm so excited. I just met a young lady uh, a, a week ago now, I think, just a week ago. Um, and she seems to be this amazing, amazing medium for healing and teaching and I can't wait to introduce her. She's Isha Patel and she's joining us all the way from Perth. So as soon as I see her jump on here, I'm going to invite her on live so you can actually get to know her whole story because I feel like she is just another kindred spirit. And the kind of work that she's doing is very in line with the things that I'm also doing. She's teaching people to heal from the inside out. So I'm actually very excited to have her on here as a live guest today. Let me see if I can find her real quick. And um, I'm, we'll get started. So for those of you out here, you, you know how I do these things. It's normally just a very, very simple conversation just to get to know everybody. I want people to be inspired by the work that everyone around them is doing and know that there is space for you no matter what it is that you're trying to accomplish in this life. So I don't want you to ever think that, you know, you're the only person. This is completely crazy. You can't do it. We all go through that. So that's why I'm trying to actually uh, uh, give people the benefit of the doubt that I get. So without further ado. Isha is on here in just a moment to tell you a little bit about her story, how she got started with with her own business. Hi there. Hi, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you so much for having me on here. Of course. And I actually really like your lighting. It's very beautiful. Like the way it's just kind of like lighting up your whole face. I like that a lot. Thank you. <laughs> So very quickly, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself, what is your name? Where are you from? Um, I've already told them that you're actually based in Perth at the moment, but wherever you, wherever you started, wherever you'd like to start is perfect. Okay, cool. So I'm originally from India. I was born in Mumbai um, many years ago, and okay. then my family moved over to New Zealand, and then we came to Australia. Nice. So I've been in Perth for about 20 years. Um, okay. But yeah, definitely true-born uh, Indian at blood. <laughs> Um, That's yeah, cool, so I, yeah, it is. And I think it's something that, um, that we kind of embrace, you know, like this multicultural yeah. um, thing, especially in Australia, it is so multicultural. Oh, anyway, it's so chill. So. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> but I got to yeah. ask, how was, how was New Zealand? I've never been to New Zealand. I do have family out there, but how was New Zealand in comparison? I'm just curious. It's beautiful. And I have been back since I went back there right. on holiday about three or four years back. And it's just stunning. Like the South Island, uh, Queenstown in particular is beautiful. They have a lot wow. of adventure sports over there. So I went and did some uh, yeah, Kenyan keep that in skiing. Mind. And, yeah, if you Ooh. ever want to do bungee jumping or something or like skydiving, okay. it's probably the place to do it. I will <laughs> one day. Not Maybe. today. I'm scared. <laughs> but go ahead. So, yes, you're settled in Perth now. You've been there for about 20 years. Um, yeah. How did you get started with your business? How did you kind of discover that this was this is it? this healing process, how did that start for you? I'm just curious. Great question. How many hours do you have? <laughs> um, hey, as long as they will let us on here. I know Instagram will kick us off after an hour, but if we need to, we'll just get back on. So I'm just keep going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, look, my, my journey started actually, um, as, as most things do, it was actually for me. And I was going through a lot of stuff in my life many years ago, and I needed a solution to my own problems. I was yeah. experiencing things, having very turbulent emotions, um, things I just I couldn't explain. Yeah. And so I started seeking on the internet, started looking up things that I could do, and that's when I discovered meditation. So I've been okay. meditating since I was 10 years old, and it really awesome. is the core to everything that I do. Um, oh my gosh, so it's when stillness, I, right? <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, I just, I have this, this belief that, you know, if everyone finds that stillness first, that everything else can happen from that space. Um, yes. And I guess over the years, it's just, it's helped me so much that I then started sharing that with other people because I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, why doesn't everybody know about it? Exactly. The funny thing is, I thought at first everybody would know about it and so I didn't mm -hmm. really think it was a big thing I was just kind of doing it and I just thought oh yeah everybody does it too but you know by the time you get to high school and you get to university and you start noticing actually you know I'm different to other people like I'm not as stressed I'm not as um like I'm just able to handle my emotions better I'm not getting caught up yes. in the gossip and the drama and I was like what well, am I doing differently that other mm -hmm. people aren't and that's when I was like oh my god it's these years of meditation <laughs> And the fact that you noticed that and you've been doing it over and over again, you didn't really notice like the impact that it was having, but it's not like you spend hours meditating a day. It's like a little bit here and there, whenever you have space, whenever you need it, you know, you kind of ground yourself and start over. So I like the fact that you've been doing it for so long and then you realize what the, the 
gradual impact was like that, you know, that exponential impact because it's been a little bit every time, every day. And I wish people would understand just, just a little bit of time for yourself every day. It could mean so much more for you in the long run. So you started with meditation. You learned for yourself. Then you started sharing with other people because it was something you realized that, okay, you thought everyone knew, okay, maybe they don't, but they should. So you started teaching, correct? Yeah, actually, I had a major turning point about four years ago where okay. I'd come out of a relationship that I thought was perfect for me that really wasn't that perfect. Um, it's It was one of those really big learning experience type of things yes. where I just got so much growth out of it and I learned so much about myself. But at the yeah. end of that relationship, I didn't know who I was anymore. And I just didn't realize how far I'd gotten lost in it until I came at the other end. And when right. I came out of that relationship, it was like my whole world just crumbled. And that's when I realized just how much of myself and my identity and everything had been invested into that relationship. And actually how up in that relationship. unhealthily yep. codependent it was. Oh, it was so bad. Um, and but so no one I, uses that term until after. Like, you don't think about codependency yeah. <laughs> when you're in the relationship. It's only after. It's like hindsight is twenty twenty. Okay, that's what it was. But yeah, 100%. everyone does it, whether you realize yeah. it or not. Everyone has a, has a phase of that. Yeah. Yeah, and it it really was, you know, I, I take full responsibility for everything in my life. And I recognize now that I wasn't as strong enough in myself. I didn't know who I was enough back then. And so I allowed myself to be in a situation where I could be taken on that ride. And, you know, emotionally, I had, I just, I felt like I had no value in that relationship, you know, so it was very challenging oh. coming out of that space. To you really did lose myself, yourself. Mm -hmm. Completely gone. I just didn't know who I was outside <laughs> of it. When that relationship ended, it was like the rug had been pulled from under my feet and I didn't know who I was anymore because my entire identity had been wrapped up inside that, that oh, thing. Oh, I know and that it's feeling. It's like all my energy was was in supporting this other person and, you know, doing everything that this other person wanted. And I never actually stopped to ask what I wanted to do. And I thought that was the definition of love, which now I know is so wrong, like so, so wrong. And um, I hate to so say it, that's a cultural thing, I think. <laughs> Asian yes, oh, women absolutely. do that a lot. We watch our mothers yes. do it, our grandmothers do it, and we kind of, oh, yeah, yes. this is this is love. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No. And there was a <laughs> bit of pressure as well in that regard, you know, because as soon as I entered the relationship from the first, like, one to two months, mum was already, like, saying, oh, so when are you getting engaged? She'd already had me married with people. Oh. Yeah, so, <laughs> so there was a lot of pressure, a lot of, um, yeah, just that, that expectation was coming in. And so I just thought it was normal. You know, I just thought that's what everybody did. And so I just went along with it and never really questioned it until I got quite far into it. And actually, I was quite depressed. Um, so there was a point in that relationship I that I just didn't, I mean, I literally did not want to be alive. You know, I just, I thought it was better to just leave the planet and to go home than to be here and live. And I mean, that's no way to live. You know, that is no way to live. No, like, we are but the fact that you were brave enough to say that on camera, like, that's pe something people should know. And I think that's something we have a problem with. Like we think it's normal until we start speaking to people or learning about other, other situations. And then we're like, okay, that's not normal. That's not good. So when we yeah. keep it to ourselves like that, we're not doing ourselves any service. We're perpetuating that lie that, Oh yeah, this is normal. This is, this is my life. This is it. So yeah. <laughs> so glad. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And um, I don't think I've actually ever shared this on camera, to be honest. I think this is the first time. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, it's all good. Yeah. I'm totally comfortable with it now. It actually doesn't yes. bother me. I'm very comfortable with my journey um, and I'm grateful for my journey. I'm so grateful yes. for the path that I've taken to get to where I am. And now I can see how life can be so much better because yes. back then I allowed so many things into my life, so many experiences, just thinking that it's okay until I somehow, you know, I guess I gave myself permission one day to ask the question of what if there could be something else? What if there could be another way? You know, what if I can live a life where I am happy, I am loving what I'm doing, and what would that yes. look like? And I think a lot of people don't even dare to ask the question because they don't even dare scared. to dream. No, they don't yeah. even dare to dream. You know, if you don't have the dream, how on earth are you ever going to live that dream? I'm right. here today because I asked the questions. And if I hadn't asked the questions, I never would have taken the steps to get to where I am. And when I yeah. did start dreaming, everyone thought I was nuts. My my dad literally came to me and said, he's like, you're making a big mistake. Because when I left that relationship, I then, um, so I moved out of that house. So like I was changing yeah. my house. I um, dropped out of uni. So like, you know, it was like a mm. career change. I uh, moved yeah. back in with my parents for a little while. 
So all these things changed at once. It's not just a relationship. It's like you're moving house, you're moving jobs, you're moving, you know, like Your everything is kind of disintegrating. Yeah. 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 And back then I was studying to be a teacher and I was studying um, my degree at the same school where this person worked. And so I obviously uh, couldn't, like, so that was like all my major. So does that mean you moved your as school well. as well? Well, I didn't end up teaching um, because I dropped out of uni. I no longer ended up getting that job, the one that I had okay. lined up. Um, cause yeah. the plan yeah. was for me to work at the school. Like I'd already, you know, I was going to apply uh, and everything. And the teachers had already yeah. come and said okay. to me, Oh, we're just that waiting for your application. Though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that, that job was like, you know, 90% in the bag, you know, it was like already yeah. lined up, ready to go. And, uh, yeah, I just, I dropped everything. So yeah, the career went away, the house went away, like all the, the white picket fence dream just completely crumbled in like 24 hours. I'm sitting here just like crying and crying and crying, not knowing what oh. to do. And that's, that's when I started having, you know, firstly, I started asking the questions, but that's when I started right. having these realizations as well. Um, the next thing that happened after that was actually a massive spiritual awakening. And this is the part where, you know, you can't always, um, you don't always know when this is going to happen for you in your life. It's <laughs> not something that you can predict. It's not your timing at all. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, universal no, it's, timing. It's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely not. Um, so this is when things started to get a little bit more crazy, a bit more out there. And okay. I guess I started to understand the world in a very, very different sort of light. Um, you know, I think I think the relationship, to be honest, was a stepping stone. It was a massive learning curve that I got so much out of. But it was when right. I left, I felt like this this cage had been opened from my life, and I was like, the contrast, really? you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. And it, you know, I didn't realize just how boxed up I'd been until I'd gotten out of it, and was like, oh right. my god, it was like the colors got brighter, the the music got louder, like everything in my life just amplified. Um, right. But then I also started becoming very sensitive to energy. Then all of a sudden I started becoming a medium. I started being able to sense things, emotions, thoughts. Like I could walk into shopping. Because you had the choice. And, yeah. Yeah. You had the choice yeah. whether you wanted to be around it or not. Yeah. It, yeah. When you leave yeah. relationships like that, it's amazing. Suddenly you don't have to yeah. check for permission or, or check in with people. It's like, wow, I can own my life. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. It was this massive expansion that happened. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so within about a few weeks, I just started asking different sets of questions around my life and I started allowing myself to do different things. All of a sudden, I booked a ticket to America. Just I started following my well, bliss, you know, yes. and at that point, I was listening to these um, online videos and stuff. I was doing, you know, quite a bit of personal development back then as well. Right. I'd listened to, well, I'd read Eckhart Tolle, I'd read Conversations with God, I'd read all those sort of classic books around um, personal yes. development, self-help. And so I knew that if I followed the thing that made me happy, that that was my sole purpose. And when I did that, it took me to America. It took me to right. running my first meditation group. It took me Very to good. doing all these things that I never would have done or had the courage to do if I hadn't asked the question, what makes me happy? Right. But it took you through this turbulent relationship to suddenly realize you need to ask yourself first. That's amazing. Well, well, I had to first not be happy to then ask to yeah. be happy. <laughs> I hate that, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> I had to be really, really, really unhappy to the point of depressed, suicidal, actually didn't want to be here. And I love that um, you say that because it's important that people realize that the pain is not forever. The pain is temporary and it depends on what you do with yep. it. So you chose to help yourself elevate and that's, that's beautiful. That's yep. part of what I did too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's been pretty incredible. Um, from that point, I then... Um, I just, I mean, from then I just made a commitment to myself to follow my joy and my joy actually then led me into more fear, funnily enough, because then I started stepping into, um, outside of one box into an unknown world and all of a so sudden then all the, the questions. next layer, <laughs> yeah, then, then it was like opening this can of worms. I was like, okay, so now that I can do whatever I want, yeah. what do I choose to do with that? And that at first is actually scarier than being in the comfort zone. And I think that's why a lot of people yeah, stay in there's the There's a lot of unknown. Yeah, yeah. Then What's that saying? A known unknown. devil is better than an unknown devil? Some nonsense like that. But yeah, I totally get it. Like, I yeah. know what to expect here. I kind of don't want to venture out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so I started just, um, I mean, I did crazy things. Like then I went to this seminar and I signed up to a, a $10,000 mentoring program that I didn't have money mm. for. And um, yeah, I yep, just started doing that. things like <laughs> on a whim and just following my yeah. intuition and listening to those little 
like those guidances that I was getting. Um, and so to be honest, the business was so organic. It just created itself. Good. It was like I sat there and was like, what do I feel like doing today? And then all of a sudden I had a meditation group and then I had, you know, I ran my first big activation event and actually that happened first. My first event was um, an activation that um, I received a series of images. So just after okay. I ended this relationship, this um, – I, I was house sitting for a friend and I was, so I was in this house by myself crying every day, you know, oh. like things were just all over the place. I, I couldn't right. walk five minutes without bursting into tears. And then I was like, right, what do I do? And I was sitting in, in just like meditation and I started receiving these, these images and I knew a little bit about sacred geometry back then, but not heaps. Um, wow. But I knew that these pictures were like sacred geometry. So I started drawing okay. these images and then Good. I just okay. got these huge push to share them with people and within five weeks of me having this breakup I was already running my first event so the process from like wow. meltdown to stepping into service you know for, for humanity for the planet was it was five weeks the whole thing happened in five weeks it's insane I look back on it and I'm like how the hell did I do that <laughs> it was crazy um but you yeah, trusted so we that's five. how that happened well, this is it. It was trust after <laughs> trust after trust. And yeah. in that time frame, I'd also booked my trip to America. I'd done all these other things and wow. dropped out of uni. And so all of that happened in, in like the first month. Um, and then, yeah, so I had my first event and the people, there were seven people in that room. And mm -hmm. it was just, it was amazing. Like people experienced things in that room that they just could not explain. Like it was such a powerful meditation. The transformation. And, Good. Yeah. And having that experience and just doing it that first time, I was like, oh, I think, I think these images actually do something. I think there's something in this. So the, right. the funny thing is I, I got the proof after I'd done it. And I think this is where a lot of people get so stuck because they want to prove something first and then they want to take it to the world. Whereas I was like, I'm going to take it to the world, and then if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, it's Actually, just that's not the way I've been trying fear. to do it too. Yeah, because yeah. if I wait till it's approved, it, I'm never going to get it done. So I just, yeah. I, no. I'm glad you said that. A lot, of, a lot of people follow their own intuition, but they don't talk about, you know, what that feels like what that yep. thought process is like. So I'm glad you, I'm really glad you said that out loud. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's actually something that I really teach. Like being intuitive is, is one of my programs that I offer people. And I think it's the absolute core. Um, again, it's one of the key, the key principles. I've, I've got a um, three step process that I use for people. So it's okay. calm, connectedness, and then clarity. And so the okay. calm is, you know, if you're in a state of stress and you're completely mm -hmm. um, like in anxiety, depression, stress, flustered, you have to get yourself calm first. That means you have yeah. to calm your mind. You have to calm your body. And that's where all the meditation comes in. And I realize yes. now, looking back, that that's what I had done without realizing that I'd done it. So when I did go through it was this to you, yeah? process, yeah. <laughs> well, so when I was going through this massive emotional tumultuous process, I went back to what I knew, and that was meditation. And that's how I was able to shift so quickly. Um, right. So the, calm, the calming part of it, I think, is so, so vital. Only when you're calm then you can start finding connectedness. And this is where the intuition comes in. Now, because I'd had that you know, years of meditation behind me, I went into my intuitive knowing very quickly. And this is how I was able to start right. channeling and, and getting the images and the guidances. And so, you know, there is a, a quite a big process that led me to being able to have such a quick transformation because right. I was able to stop, calm myself down, breathe, pause, and then ask myself, what do I do from here? And only when I was calm was I able to then find that, you know, connect to that higher self, connect to that higher wisdom that we all have within us, right? Because we all have this wisdom that knows what we're doing in this life. And I think, you know, people spend so much time looking to the outside world to get clues on what's right, what's wrong, what am I supposed to do instead You're of looking for confirmation and for permission. Yeah. Yeah. When you can grant yourself validation. Oh. Yes, yeah. exactly. Give yourself permission, <laughs> give yourself validation, give yourself mm. all those things that you're looking for. And that's what I learned to do. So when I learned to connect within, you know, and actually trust that intuition, which I, I always talk about the intuition as like an internal GPS, right? Right. It's your internal navigation system that tells you what the optimum path is, the fastest path is, the highest path that's in the good for you and also for the rest of the people that you're interacting with. Because I truly believe yes that when you are in actually living your sole purpose and you're in alignment with who you are, that that is in the highest benefit for yourself and for others, right? It's Absolutely, because it takes into consideration your feelings as well. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So when you get connected, 
you know, after getting yourself calm and you get connected, then you start getting guidance on where to actually go and you can start actioning those guidances. Now, this is the other the thing, right? People, people need to learn to trust that guidance and actually act on that guidance. Because mm-hmm. if you don't act on that guidance and you wait for the guidance to prove itself, which, again, I've seen time and time again, people are like, oh, I'll believe it when I see it. And I'm like, you won't see it until you believe it. Right. Because you create your right. reality, right? You are creating mm-hmm. it. So until you vision it and you have that connection and you take actions, and they can be small actions. They can be simple right. things like, you know, um, you get the guidance to sit in meditation instead of going out to a party on a, on a Friday night, for example. Mm-hmm. And then that might be a really profound moment for you, right? So instead yeah. of doing the thing that society expects you to do, you do the thing that you feel like doing. And those small little actions are you telling the universe that you want to come into alignment, that you are in alignment because you're acting on it, and therefore you create more opportunities for more alignment. And it just keeps magnifying. Yeah. It just amplifies itself. Um and then, yeah, once you have that connectedness, you then come to clarity. So you've got, you know, you've got the calm, you've got the connectedness, you've got the clarity. The clarity yeah. comes when you're connected because then you can start asking the bigger questions in life. And again, I see so many people, they're, they're very caught up in the, um, I'll, I'll call it the ego self. I don't really have a better word for it, but it's like the me self. It's the personality. It's like, what about me and my life and me and my finances and me and my, you know, health? And it's all about me, me, me. When you get past that point of, um, or I guess when you get deeper into that connectedness, your mm-hmm. set of questions changes again. And instead of asking, how can I sort out my life? You start asking, how can I serve other people? How can I serve yes. the world? How can right. I do things that are in optimum benefit? And then when you start solving the bigger problem of what's actually happening out there in the world, your personal stuff sorts itself out, right? Because when you start yeah. adding value into the world and you start offering your gifts and your services and your uniqueness into the world, then your business builds itself around that because you start gaining a following, you start gaining people who who believe in you, you start helping people. You know, first right. and foremost, if you help somebody, that's your business, right? And you get paid to yeah. do that. Yes, right? So when absolutely. you add value into the world, that's actually helping the collective, actually serving humanity and serving the planet, then exactly. you're guaranteed to get this this amazing support around you, whether it's through network, finance, it's actually all of it. Yeah, when you're truly yeah, it alignment, all comes together. It all yes. comes in. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that. So you went from experiencing tremendous pain, unfortunately. You sat with the pain. You understood the pain. You kind of found your way out of it yourself. You d- developed this three-step process that you were doing, like, just automatically because it seemed like, you know, the logical next thing for you to do. And you've developed that into something you can teach. You've made it teachable. Yeah. And you're sharing your gift with the world. So you fixed your house first, basically, so to speak. You fixed your yeah. house first, and now you're sharing so you can fix or help other people fix and pass it forward, basically. So the fact that your business grew organically, you followed your bliss, you you did what came naturally to you because you were tuned in and and receiving messages from the universe, what is maybe one thing that you could tell people that was something you do every day now that maybe you didn't do every day before, but you do every day now because you know better? I have one non-negotiable daily practice. Um, okay. It's actually, it, there, there are actually four essential practices. This is, you can, it's on my website. Um, okay. You can actually download these practices for free. Uh, okay. You start by opening your heart. So every day I open my heart, I get white light into my heart and just radiate that out. Um, Mm -hmm. then I have a practice where I take golden light and I flow it through my energy field. I have a very strong understanding of energy now. And I know that when you align your energy to the energy of the earth and and everything around you, that you are so much more centered and balanced. Um, So I make sure I do that every day. I connect into the earth. I connect up to source and I give gratitude every day. Non-negotiable. Every day. (laughs) Very good. So that's like a first thing in the morning kind of deal then, probably, just to start your day off, correct? So That's it's, it. I mean, I've noticed that it's very important as well. If I don't reset every morning, I mean, yeah, I wake up, but that's not enough. I got to wake up and then intentionally decide that this is going to be how I, I approach my day. So not as articul- articulate as you, obviously, because you've got this process down pat, but I see where, where there's a big difference. If I just kind of like go with the flow, check my phone and rush through life, um, chances are I will get sidetracked more than off- more often yeah. than not. But if I intentionally set it so that you know this is what I want to do this is what I'm expecting out of life today and this is how I'm going to meet the day 
it does make a, a major difference. I really love that a lot. So yeah, I know you have a couple of events coming up. Would you like to tell everybody what you've got going on? I'm very excited for you, by the way. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, the background is I so I built a business organically, as you've heard. Uh, mm -hmm. then started having people coming to me asking how I did it. Um, yep. So I've now created a two-day event coming up in August. It is yep. for other healers and entrepreneurs because okay. I know that there are so many other uh, people out there who have these amazing gifts and they just mm -hmm. don't know how to get them out into the world. So I've created this beautiful fusion between um, healing, like energy work and business. Okay. And so this mm -hmm. event is called The Awakening. It's on the 24th and 25th of August coming up in Perth. So very quickly, is that live or is that online as well? No, it's a live two-day event in okay. Perth. Okay. Yeah, it's a full-on massive seminar. There's like full activations happening. There's going to be meditation. So you physically got to be, be there, training. right? You physically have to be in the room, okay. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Um, it's actually, honestly, this event is worth flying in for. Like I have people that are flying in for this because the people who okay. know what I do to spend two days in a room with me um, and because the price point is quite low as well. Um, wow, okay. I'm running it. Yeah, it, it's under 100 bucks. So two days oh, in a wow. year, under a hundred bucks. Next year, yeah. this same event is actually going to be three thousand dollars. So it's literally worth flying in for for people who are watching this. Get it quick, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like a one time. Never going to do this again. Never at the uh -huh. point. Never going to happen. I uh, currently get paid a thousand dollars an hour. So to spend two days with me for ninety-seven bucks is like it's insane. Um, hey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's going to be incredible. So anyone who's watching this who is a healer, an entrepreneur, you want to learn about how to build a business and actually share your gifts with the world, I'm really passionate about helping you guys. Uh, so please yeah. reach out and I will send you a special link because um, you'll get a special code. It'll give you a major, major discount on the event. Tickets are actually being sold for around 500 bucks, but for okay. for this particular network, I'm going to give you guys a massive offer. I'm going to give it to you for 95 wow. bucks. Wow. I really appreciate yeah. that, you guys. So if you're not already following this young lady, you better quickly, like quick, fast, and <laughs> yeah. in a hurry. Just <laughs> um, and the only follow way to get and... tickets is you have to DM me because you won't Good. get this offer anywhere else. So you have to send me a private message. And, then and that's I will actually a really great way for you to control link. that too. I like that. Oh, yeah. The room's already more than half full, so i got to make sure I actually keep a lid on numbers. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's amazing. Wow. So under 100 bucks two days live with you and you just mentioned that you know even to have like a, an hour-long phone conversation with you runs about a thousand dollars so yeah this is amazing this is yeah this is it, it, amazing so y'all have handled the flight, flight just get there <laughs> <laughs> yeah just just book the flight get your accommodation you'll even with all costs covered you'll still get the whole thing under a thousand bucks it's amazing wow wow yeah. brilliant i love it okay Come over. so Come that's the me. live <laughs> Um, let me sort a couple of things out first, but, um, in the meantime, so this live event toward the end of August, the 24th and 25th, you said, correct? Yeah. Are there any other, um, recommendations? Are there any prerequisites that they need to like have a, a, a basic understanding of before they come to the event? Is this basically for, you know, beginners who haven't even started a business? Like what is your audience? Like who's your target audience for this? Who would benefit the most from this event? Who would benefit the most? People who are already have already started their business. Um, okay. People who already have some like some sort of clientele. So whether you're getting like maybe one to two clients a week, uh, the mm -hmm. event will also help people who are doing this close to full time. Because um, okay. I have. Um, I guess my main business thing is actually vibrational business. So while I don't teach some of the you know foundations of marketing, I mean I teach some of that stuff, but that's not the main yeah. thing I do. I teach people how to get into alignment with their business. So I have specific right. tools that I've taught people that help them clear all the money blocks, that help them clear like the energetics of what I'm they're glad actually you doing, said that. so that they can have a business. Yes, and we yes, we've so mentioned that a couple of times. We talked about this very briefly uh, yesterday when we were catching up, right? You were talking about the fact that people think it's mutually exclusive to be spiritual and to make money. Hey, trainer Singh. So I feel really, I feel really strongly about that. And I'm so glad you mentioned it to me. Would you mind like talking about how that's that's not the case, you guys? <laughs> This is one of my favorite topics. I will love to talk about it. So, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, because I've been on such a massive journey with this, and I was that person that thought I had to give all my services away for free. In fact, I shut down 70% of my business. It's I like a swami mentality, right? Either. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's so not useful. Um, yeah. So, okay, I, 
I haven't shared this online before or really anywhere, but wow, it's last like year, <laughs> I know, I know you're getting all the exclusives today. So I shut down 70% of my business this time of actually probably about December last year okay. because 12 months ago, everything was falling apart. Now it's funny that oh. I'm sitting on the other end of this now as a business coach and an expert because right. I went through the process of doing everything that I was not supposed to do. I uh, gave away way too many free That's services. That's what makes you a really great teacher, see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, I have done I have done it all. I've made all the mistakes. I've done the biggest fuck-ups. Like, I've had to send out apology <laughs> letters, like, to mass audiences. Oh, no. and, like, wow, all okay. sorts, like, all sorts. I mean, I have just... Yeah, you know what? We're not even going to go there. Some of it's like embarrassing. But that's enough, I think. No, but but that's (laughs) enough because then that means that, okay, you're walking your your talk. You're not making up all kinds of stuff. You're not picking up buzzwords from the internet. You did all the mistakes first. And now you're like, don't do what I did, please. (laughs) Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm like, please, people, don't do what I did because I have done it. It's bad. Don't go there. So now when I teach people business, I teach them how to do it properly because I can hold their hands and I can say, here's exactly how I did it. Here are the things that didn't work. Please don't make the same mistakes I did. Here are the things that did work. Please just take the fast track. Now, of course, people are going to make their own mistakes as well. Like everyone has to go through the journey. Yeah, Yeah. there's always free will and (laughs) and people don't always listen to my advice anyway, Um, which is really funny because I'm like... yeah, anyway, the, the whole, like, you know, <laughs> I think I know better. And it's sort of complex for people, which is cool. Like people think they know everything. Um, I have learned also as well to trust my mentors 100% because I've yeah. currently, I've got four mentors. Um, nice. All of them are, are millionaires. And so I've been doing a lot of Your circle is strong? With them. Good. I have a very okay. strong circle. Yeah. Um, and I made the mistake of also not listening to my mentors. <laughs> Because you know how I said to you, I signed up for this ten thousand dollar program like way right. back when I first started my business, mm-hmm. and I thought, no, no, I know what I'm doing. I've got this. Didn't listen to his advice. Completely messed up my business. I went broke. Like this time last year, I was completely broke. Oh. I had no money. And then I I signed up to another mentoring program. It was like thirty thousand dollars. I didn't have the money. Within two months, I went from making a thousand dollars a month to ten thousand dollars a month. Hey, in two okay. Months. Yeah, but this time you listen, that's probably what happened, right? (laughs) (laughs) So now I'm like, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. Like I've been from like, I I scaled up 10 times in two months, you know, so I But that's what you probably needed too, to be able to really relate to your, I I find that all the time when I deal with emotions, sometimes I go back through the roller coaster, not meaning to, because I'm just stupid sometimes. Um, (laughs) I go back through the roller coaster realizing that, shit, you know what? Yeah, I absolutely need to go keep on teaching what I'm teaching because if I went through this and it was so painful for me, imagine what people who don't know better are going through. So absolutely, yeah. I get it. Yeah. Not fun, and I also but I get it. I have to go back to learning. I also have to go back to being the student and to say mm-hmm. that actually I don't know everything. And then I went and reached out to people who were more successful, higher up in the hierarchy of, you know, have more experience, making more money, having helped more people. And I went and talked to those people and said, how did you do it? And then I signed up those people as my mentors. And so right. I went and I sat in their rooms and I've learned and I've, I've spent over a hundred thousand dollars on my own education in the last three years. You know, it's crazy. Like but look to at learn what that from means, some though. of the top. Yeah, 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 exactly. To learn from some of those top mentors to get to that point now where I can sit here and say, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. I've put these things into practice myself and surprise, yeah. surprise, they worked for me. You know, I, I was the first one to be surprised about it. I was like, Oh look, I've actually done. You're your own best student. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. I am my number one testimony because I put my own practices, my meditation practices, my business practices, I put it all into practice myself. And I'm not one of those people that just started a coaching business. I actually have an, a business, like a studio, you know, that I have run. I'm glad you said that too. Everything. There's a lot of those yeah, popping oh, I up. See so many, I see so many people that do like a two day, three day coaching seminar and all of a sudden they're a coach or consultant. And I'm like, great, do you have another business that you actually have experience running? Because otherwise you can't coach businesses, right? Right. It's, yeah, this is phenomenal. I love it. So you're your best yeah. testimony. Yeah. I am and too. And I think a lot of trainers are. It. <laughs> but yeah. it's funny though. I feel like all these people that pop up and want to be a coach, you know, they're so confident. And you and I, I don't know about you, I was so hesitant to call myself a coach and an expert because 
I was scared. Like, I didn't have all the papers behind me, although I've been to college, but, like, I've lived through some things and I've seen some crazy nonsense and I've dug myself out of more holes than I'd like to admit. But I was so hesitant to say, yes, I'm a coach. I'm an expert in this. And it took me a long time, but I'm glad I, I do that. Totally now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and good on you for doing that, you know, because um, I think that is the biggest challenge. It, it's just, it's funny. Like, okay. So I see people who go and do some three day training, they call themselves an expert and they present themselves as really confident. And then I see people who've actually lived through it, who don't <laughs> see their own value. And I just find that yeah. so ironic because I've been on, on your end of the spectrum where I I've know you also have. gone, oh, but what do I know? Who, who am I? Who am because I we're still learning, people? yeah? <laughs> yes. It's because... never ending learning people, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's never ending. The moment you think that you know it all, you just get yeah. thrown into a different bucket and life just goes, nope, now here's something else. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm so fact, grateful. Just, You've uh, talked about all of the really, really important stuff to me, like the money blocks, being spiritual and making money. The fact that we want to call ourselves coaches and run this business, but we don't feel like we're quite equipped yet because we're still learning. I think it's hilarious, but it's been a hell of a journey. I wouldn't change a thing. I would not change I a thing. I would not either. I'm so, <laughs> so grateful. And the biggest thing that I've gotten out of my own journey is I'm yeah. happy. I'm yes. happy. You Peace know, is like possible. I can, yeah, I am, I'm actually sitting here today, you know, 12 months ago, I was crying to my parents because I was like, my life's falling apart. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, you know, and I had to get over a lot of that money stuff. And as soon as I started yeah. seeing my value and, and what I'm actually worth and that I was able to help people and to start charging fairly for what I'm doing, you know, yes. for the problems that I was solving for people, I, I became really happy and satisfied because last year I was feeling like I was still helping people, but I was not feeling valued, right? Like I was adding a lot of value to other people's lives, not getting a fair exchange for that. And I got completely burnt out, completely I'm, not, I'm out. glad you said that. You said <laughs> not getting fairly charged. So that's something that we really need to, to make sure people understand. You may be doing the work. You, the transformation is always there. You've been doing the work. But the way you set up your business, that means a lot. Yeah. The pricing structure, yeah. your, you know, how much you deliver based on this price point, that matters a lot. And it took me a very long time. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, some of it I still overgive, but it's something that I naturally do. And it, it was a progression. I asked for something very, very small because I was even like, it felt weird to even ask, right? So I started off at something stupid like $25 an hour, which is what I was making at my last job. But this is not what I'm teaching. This is not the transformation I'm providing. And it wasn't, you know, a straight one, one hour for, uh, the price that I was I was charging, it's more like what I teach you is going to have a lasting effect. It's going to go beyond this one hour that you speak to me. You're going to have to sit there and think about what I've taught you. You're going to have to implement. You're going to have to understand and really, you know, absorb all this information. It's not going to be. It's not going to be just one hour. It's going to take you a little bit. So that's what I needed to start learning to to charge. And I'm glad you said last year your structure was not there. This year, yeah. the structure has changed everything. Yeah, it's made a massive difference. Yeah, it's created so much more ease and peace. And I yes. don't have to worry about the business side of things because now that I have yeah. all the systems and the structures and everything in place, I can actually now spend more of my time just teaching and implementing and actually sitting in the session. Doing what you people. love most. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Not worrying about yeah. the back end I'm, stuff. Exactly. Last year, I was spending 80% of my time managing people, doing admin, and then by the time I got to my sessions, I was like, I was burnt out. And so I was hardly taking on any sessions, you know, right. and I'm like, wait, wait, what do I actually love doing? And again, you know, you, you have to have these phases where you come back to the drawing board. So four years ago, I came back to the drawing board of my life. I had a clean slate and I was like, what do I do? Now, last right. year, I went through that same process again with the, the new me and was Next like, level. I need to go back to the drawing board. What right. do I actually want for my life? What makes me happy? And it was the same question. Right. The yeah. question hadn't changed. It was just your situation. The answer. Well, the answer had changed. OK. The answer had changed because back then I followed what made me happy. And what made me happy was just running meditation groups. And I ran them all by donation. Okay. I didn't really care because I was doing other things. And like, <laughs> it didn't really make a big difference. Right. It right. was on the side. When that business became my full time thing, I could no longer offer my meditations and my services by donation because I was like, I, I still have bills to pay. I still have to you know, yeah. um, find a way to make the system work. But also the next the next answer, and this, this was the game changer, actually. 
because okay. you know at different stages in life you have different answers to the same questions so if you ask right. yourself what makes me happy at a certain point you'll say well i'll be happy or i'll be satisfied if i have you know x amount of money i'll have okay. you know these these certain things in my life sorted so my business will be sorted my home life will be sorted my relationships will be sorted and then and then i'll feel really satisfied okay. um and then you get to a different point in life and you start saying well actually like i've got those things you know i'm actually reasonably happy with my relationships right. and my work and everything's kind of okay what's the next thing that i can that i can aim for and for me it's about how can i help more people how can i reach more people so right. i okay. started asking different questions or i started answering the my questions question. differently okay. yeah differently because i i realized that my purpose wasn't about just fixing me in my personal life it was about how can i impact more people and have more of a global change and in order to make global change you actually need a lot of money you know and i i can fully uh, yeah. believe in <laughs> conscious it's conscious capitalism Okay. Right. My my plan for the next decade is to set up a foundation so that eventually the the world can have all of these meditation techniques for free. Like that is right. the plan. You know, I want right. this to be accessible. And I I'm inspired actually and people are going to find this a bit weird, but my biggest inspiration is Coca-Cola because I don't drink Coke okay. by the way. I think it's totally unhealthy and has nothing to do with it. But <laughs> But you're talking about business model, right? Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Coca-Cola's mission is to have yeah. Coke in every corner of the globe and they have done uh -huh, it. Yes. You can go yep. to the slums in India and there are kids They have Coke somehow. They don't have fresh drinking water, they don't have toilets <laughs> and they have Coca-Cola and I'm like how is this possible? And so I've looked at that and well, I said did it. I I admire that vision and that mission and I want to follow that because I want these meditation tools and techniques to be accessible easily and freely Oh, at a very low cost to every corner of the globe because I know that's how we're going to change the world. I have no doubt about right. it. In order to do that, I need to build myself really big, have lots and lots of money, and I'm self-funded. I don't get any funding from like the that's government awesome. or anything like that. Even better, so all of my funding comes from my clients, right? So I I get this money from my clients, which I very happily, happily receive. So so gratefully, I deliver a lot of value and transformation to these people's lives. That's worth so much more than what they pay me. My clients literally tell me. that they should be paying me more. <laughs> it's actually quite funny. Good. <laughs> um yeah, it's good. That's how I know I'm doing something right. And then with that, I take those funds and I, you know, you got to look after yourself first. It's like when you're on an yes. airplane, you put your own oxygen mask on first. And this is what spirit right. spiritual people who are not and making money need lesson. to understand this. Yes, you need to understand yeah. this that you cannot serve somebody else until you've filled up your own cup. And so I yeah. fill up myself. I do the things that I need to do. I have my daily practices, I have my hobbies, I have, you know, healthy food. I have all these things that nourish me and this vehicle and this energy that I have so that I can then continue to bring my best self into the world and then yeah. change more lives. So, you know, getting to a point now where I can run these massive seminar style events and, you know, impact hundreds of people in a room as opposed to like 10 to 12. Right. right that that's bigger impact but to do that to run an event for for 10 people you might spend like $500 to run an right. event for 150 people takes $10,000 right that's uh, yeah. how it is <laughs> you know that's just you know by the time you're you're getting staff and all these other things but you got to look at what is the impact of that i would rather have yeah. more money make a bigger impact than to have no money and try and say that i'm helping people when i'm not even helping myself Right? right so you got to see right. that bigger picture and you got to have that bigger vision and this is why you have to start asking the questions around well what do you actually want to do what is your purpose and that right. is going from sorting out your own life being calm being connected into clarity around your purpose and your bigger picture then you can actually help more people right absolutely absolutely and wow so many big nuggets in here you guys if you haven't listened from the beginning please listen from the beginning and even after the 24 hours is up it will be on facebook and i will have it on youtube as well so i'll send you the links in the meantime isha patel you better be following her she's got an amazing deal for you guys you better dm her right away if you're actually interested come over to perth join her for this two day live event and experience the transformation for yourself so generally speaking are you more active um you're probably more active on uh on Instagram, correct? Uh, I hardly use Instagram actually. I hadn't been on there for months Just, until I So then mostly on day. um Oh my god, then this is this is such kismet then. So Facebook and It then is, your your 100%. website as well. <laughs> yes, yeah. I love um, this. yeah, I'm definitely more on Facebook. Um but That's yeah, fine. I definitely believe in divine connection because I just happened to be on that day, found your Yeah, profile. for the last like 
five, ten minutes or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's always the awesome. guide. Again, it's that intuitive connection. Like I'm always in the yeah. right place at the right time, meeting the right people, having these opportunities, taking the right alignment. Because you action. open your heart first thing in the morning. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's actually so it. simple. <laughs> it is, it is. And you guys, just don't take any of these things for granted. Your intuition is a lot stronger than you give it credit for. And it's not just this little Jiminy Cricket voice in your head. It's like your whole body feels it. You really do. Yeah. When you're really tuned in, your whole body feels it. And you're like, yes, this is yeah. correct. This is right. Yes. So, yes. Um, oh my gosh, this is this has been great. I love the fact <laughs> that you said you're you're you're, you're solely fund you fund yourself. Um, none of this, you know. I'm on the dole, but I'm I have a business stuff. I'm glad because there are a lot of those people out there too. So I'm really glad you're making a no, big shift. You're making a big impact. <laughs> the point is though. You were humble enough to go back home and start over from home. You were humble enough to start at the bottom and ask those questions. And every time you hit, you know, this next level of who you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to do your business next, you're able to humbly sit quietly and, okay, what do I really need now? What is the next step, honestly? So yeah. you've taken us through a couple of roller coasters that you've been through in your life. You've talked us through the fact that you are your best testimony and your best student and you test your, on yourself first before you give it to the world. You made sure that you made, you know, you mentioned that you have to be whole before you can give of yourself to be effective because there's no point in doing anything half cocked. It's, this is your name, your brand, everything that you're building for yourself. And I am so pleased and thankful that you kind of dropped into my lap here. I'm, I'm so excited. Thank this you. is, <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. And I had no idea, but I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and check out your website for these, uh, these, uh, tools that you have on your website itself. I recommend everybody else do the same thing. And if you have any questions, please reach out to her. She is such a humble soul. Look at this light on her face. She's just, you know, very friendly, very approachable. And I'm so grateful to have you as part of my, my journey at the moment. This is brilliant. I love Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Any last I words you want to leave um, the audience with? Yeah, just one, one last little piece of this transformation. Sure. So if you have watched the whole video, um, I have mentioned a lot of these you know, roller coasters and journeys that I've got on. Where I'm at now is actually just, it's another tipping point. I'm actually in that transition myself. And this, okay. this piece of wisdom, um, you know, sometimes I wait until I've fully integrated things before I share them. And sometimes I okay. share them while I'm in it. So this is one that okay. I'm still in. Um, okay. And it's, it's the next level of realization. And I mean an experiential realization, not just theoretical, around where true happiness actually comes from. Because I've been that that's person important. that's chased a lot of those things. And I have said to you that the questions I asked myself back then were what makes me happy, what makes me happy, what makes me happy. And my current answer now, and this is something that, you know, spiritual teachers talk about all the time, but to actually realize this that my happiness has nothing to do with any of those things. And now I'm operating from a space of I'm happy first and then yes. I give to the world. I love that. I think I read that somewhere recently. Robin Sharma said something like, the answer is yes, now ask the question. <laughs> yes, yes. And this is where I'm starting to flip everything around. And actually everything that I've learned and the journey that I've had in the last you know, four to five years um, is, is kind of going a lot more internal to realizing even more that I am consciously creating my reality, that everything is actually first from the inside out. So I first yes. find that happiness within myself and then things that are in alignment with that vibration come into my life. So I'm no longer externally seeking things. I'm no longer striving for certain things to give me a feeling because the feeling is already there. Now, yes. that, that gives freedom. That to me is freedom because now I'm operating from a place of I can do whatever I want knowing that I'm not impacted, influenced by, or even affected by the external actions or situations that are happening around me because I'm happy no matter what. And now all of a sudden, yeah. you know, I've had these opportunities come into my life that require me to be so much more calm and centered and dealing with so many more people, like mass, mass audiences. Um, and to do that, you know, if I were being affected by the energy of a thousand people, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. And How, so it has yeah. to be so clear and centered. And again, it comes down to those daily practices. And so you get more aligned, more centered, more attuned to realize that actually you are free from just everything in order to be everything able to do around everything. you. Yeah. yeah. That, and then that you can detachment have almost. maximum. Absolutely. Maximum yes. That's where peace comes from. If you didn't already know, that's where peace comes from. Peace comes yes. from you. You are yes. peace. Once you remember yep. all that, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's a, it I takes the time to remember all joy. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. This has been great. And this is why, this is why I do the interviews in the first place because I like seeing how people light up when they talk about the things they love the most. And that's why I'm asking you about you. Who else knows you better than you? And the fact that you love all these things, you accept all these things, you've, you've owned every little piece of your life up until now. And it no longer bothers you to say it out loud. It doesn't like break you in a tear. Like, this is it. This is, this is what happened. And now here, here's where I am. And this is what I learned from this. And this is what I'm going to teach you because I figured it out for myself. I love it. And I cannot say that mm -hmm. enough. I love it. Thank you so much for your time. I hope this has been fun for you. And you guys, if you haven't already noticed, she is an amazing medium for peace, joy, happiness, through meditations, among other things. So please do not waste any time. Do follow her. Ask her questions. Get in touch. But in the meantime, thank you again. And I really appreciate you. everything you've taught us here. Yes, it's been an honor. And thank you for your light as well and everything that you're doing. You're I think it's so amazing to be connecting with um, just some other incredible human beings because, you know, we're all on this journey together. No one's in yes. it alone. And we're all in this beautiful, harmonious um, piece of this, this bigger picture. So thank you as well so much and for the opportunity as well. Anytime. I really appreciate it. So the next time you have an event, please reach out. We will talk about that too. But in the meantime, you have what? Two and a half weeks or so Three to weeks. get your money Three in order. Counting. <laughs> okay. So DM her for the deal. Okay. Cause it isn't available anywhere else. I'm not going to repeat what it is. So just DM her and ask. And um, in the meantime, we'll stay in touch. Thank Very you. Very so excited. Much. Thank you so much. You take care. Thanks you guys for, uh, for watching. Bye. Thank you.